Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Halftime, the show where I play the first half hour of a brand new video game, and I give you my thoughts and opinions on it at the end. I'm Adam Wolf from Gamers Platform, and today we're on to Van Helsing 2, or should I say, The Incredible Adventures of Van Helsing 2. <clears throat> This game just came out yesterday, and uh, I wanted to make the video yesterday, but they took forever to release it. Like, its release date was the 22nd, and I guess Steam has this thing where they don't release games until, like, maybe 1 p.m., around my time, 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, and uh, 1 p.m. showed up, and they didn't release it. It didn't get released until 2 p.m., and then I had stuff to do after that, you know, at, at that point, so I didn't really have enough time to make the video, and it's just, it's bullshit, you know? They should have released it, like, on midnight, you know, so that we'd have the game to play and everything, but whatever, I can make the video now, and that's what's important. <clears throat> There's a cow in the screen. But, um, now, I'm not gonna lie. I played this for yesterday's live stream, and uh, so I've seen the first half hour of the game, but I still didn't, I, I mean, I kind of gave my ideas on it during the stream, but if you weren't there, obviously you're not going to know. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So now's the time for me to show you the first half hour of the game and then give you uh, an idea as to what I think about the game uh, since the first one. And so... Um, Without further ado, let's get gaming. First, we're gonna change character, but we don't have a character, um, so I'm gonna create a brand new character. Okay, and you have the choice of whether to play the game on normal or veteran, um, or at least uh, play the campaign based on you know what you have. Do you do you need a new character, or can do you have a character that you can import from the previous game? Now, for me, I have the previous game. I haven't finished it yet, so I don't want to do this. I'm just gonna stick with normal. Okay, and then you get to choose between the three classes, uh, just like last time. You got the Hunter, the Thaumaturge, and the Arcane me Mechanic. Um, I played the Thaumaturge during the live stream. It's okay. Um, I didn't I didn't really uh, get a chance to get into the uh, spells far enough to see if there were any like major awesome spells. Um, and then I haven't played the Arcane Mechanic yet, but I kind of want to stick to the Hunter just because that's what I'm used to, and uh, I know that uh, I do well with it, so there and then of course we're gonna select casual because that's how I roll <clears throat> I'm gonna call him I'm probably just gonna delete this guy anyway as well just like uh, the other character that I made last night because I'm gonna import my my first game character so we're gonna go with Reznov Reznov Van Helsing um, so there we go, and uh, as you can see, just like in the first game, you can choose between single player story, or you can go to multiplayer, and I usually just stick to the single player story, so we're going to get right into this. My name is Van Helsing, and I'm a monster hunter. You could call it a twist of fate, that I came to Borgovia to help the monsters who once ruled this land. Although it took a while to reach my destination. At least the detour gave me an opportunity to explore the wilderness. At times, I was really grateful that I had my companion, Lady Katarina, at my side. I wouldn't want her to hear that, though. For a ghost, she can be remarkably vain and murderous. Borgovia is a fascinating land, at least from a hunter's perspective. Also, this is the only place where the ink the dark material of creation leaks through the cracks of the world. A long time ago, my father defeated Borgovia's immortal vampire lords and entrusted the land to a group of genius scientists. During our travels, we slowly began to suspect that it must have been a mistake. When we entered the dark city of Borgova, it became evident that the new age of enlightenment had only brought chaos and mayhem. I did what I had to do. I found my father's underground lair and gathered the members of the Resistance, the rebellious mortals and immortals fighting together. And how we fought, it was glorious. We battled impossible creatures. We repelled tides of inhuman invaders. And I wouldn't rest until I defeated the last mad scientist, Professor Fulmigati. He even had a proper doomsday automaton. Honestly, it was a hunter's dream come true. But as it turns out, winning the grand battle 
sometimes opens up a brand new adventure. <clears throat> okay, so they give you a little rundown as to what happens in the first game uh, right there. I didn't want to talk during it because it's important. If you haven't played the first game or if you haven't seen my... Uh, I believe I made a halftime episode on it. Um, then you should go check that out. <clears throat> uh, the one thing that I do have to say about this game uh, that was disappointing at first, but then I realized it's just kind of stupid. Um, the first game has full controller support. So if you have a 360 controller and you'd rather play with that, hey, achievement that I didn't get last night. Now that's what I call <laughs> an explosion. Um, that is that, you know, the first game has full controller support, and if you have a 360 controller, a wired one, no, <clears throat> or even a wireless one that's, you know, or even a wireless one that, that uh, you can get Don't for PC, you, have just <clears throat> your first um, you could use it in the first game. And although it's a well-designed user interface uh, with the controller in mind, what is this? it's... Not great, you know. I I, I actually I much prefer. I realized last night, playing the crap out of the first game, that I much prefer the um, the keyboard and mouse. It's a much nicer design. It's a much nicer layout, uh, and it's uh, definitely easier to look at. That was fun, Catherine. Excuse me. Um, so. You know, this one did not come with full controller support. They might have realized that the first game, although it worked, it still was clunky. It still was not great. So they said, eh, screw it. We'll just we'll just leave it keyboard and, and mouse. Um, the one thing I do have to say about this game, though, that I think is absolutely excellent is that it's got local co-op. I mean, not a lot of games do that on the PC, but you can literally, I could be playing with the keyboard and mouse, and I guess my friend, if I wanted to play uh, local co-op in my on the same uh, system, could be playing with, you know, the controller if they wanted to. So, I'm going to get going here. Um, since I have played, you know, basically played the first half hour of the game, um... I know what I'm looking for here. I know what uh, what to do. So it'll be a little bit quicker to get to uh, get further into the game. <clears throat> and finally, you look the part. Okay. Um, I, I have to say that the you know that, missions right? at the beginning of the game, or the quests, I should say, at the beginning of the game, are quite... They're a little bit on the boring side. I, I, I will say that. So be prepared to be... Uh, watching me go back and forth on the same map, you know, it's just, it's kind of annoying, to be honest. But, uh, either way, um, <clears throat> user interface, not much different, uh, a few details that have been improved here and there, but, uh, not too different from the first game. I, I definitely wanted to make sure that I knew what I was, uh, talking about today. Um, so I ended up making, I made sure that I played a sh a crap ton. I'm gonna swear, but at the end of the next I mean, it's not like I don't give a fuck about swearing, but your I don't know. Um, I played a shit ton of uh, the first game, and I wanted to make sure that I knew what the user interface looked like. But like I said, there will be few subtle changes, but nothing too major. Um, the game does run on the same engine, so it looks just like the the first game, which looks great. So uh, the game still looks great. I feel like it runs better though. Um, when when going through the graphics options, there's a lot. There's maybe a couple of different options that you can enable or disable or stuff like that from the first one. Not too many differences, but still runs great, looks great. I like it. So I don't know about you guys, but <coughs> excuse me. Revenge. Though the professor is dead, his heritage and his allies still remain. This tortured. But if you haven't played the first game, I highly recommend it. It's. This series is is worth the money that is that is uh, being charged. Fourteen ninety nine on Steam for both for either game. Um, this one when it was before it came became released, it was on a pre purchase sale of thirteen forty nine. I took advantage of that myself and uh, wanted to get it while it was cheaper. <clears throat> but I gotta say, I'm super stoked about about playing this game once I finish the first one and carrying over my guy um, just because this game is just so much fun so much fun um, the user interface down here is a little different uh, before it was you had the health 
and mana in... You had the health and mana in, like, you know, straight lines. You know, these little test tube looking things. And then the rage was on the outside. Now they've switched that around a little bit. Um, you have more slots for spells here. Before, in the first game, you only had four. Two on this side, two on this side. Now you've got six, which is great. That means more room for spell enhancements and stuff like that. Um, you know, so the, the little interface uh, differences are, are, are here. But uh, the quest list is still on the right side. The map is still up here. Um... <clears throat> I gotta say, the map actually does look a little bit nicer. I can't remember if they had it in a circular pattern or in a square pattern in the first game, but whatever they did, it somehow looks better. Um, and, you know, portraits have been changed. Lady Katarina, her portrait has been uh, turned into, I guess, what she looked like when she was alive. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So that's what that looks like. Uh, in the first game, it's just her portrait as is, as she's a ghost and stuff, so... I'm just going to turn these tutorials off because I know what to do. Okay, so the rage system is, is the same <clears throat> as the first game. You want to activate it as often as you can, as often as you have rage. Though, when I was playing the Thaumaturge, I noticed that the rage would disappear. And that was very strange to me. I'm not sure why I wasn't using it. And I don't recall, you know, uh, setting up a, 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 an option in gameplay options as, um, <clears throat> like, automatically using the rage or something. So, I mean, if there is, that's great. Then it takes one less thing that I have to do away. And all I have to do is focus on making myself survive. I already ran out of coffee. I really need to get better at doing that. Getting the coffee and then recording. Um, now, we're already at about 13 minutes, so uh, I gotta say. And, and also, as you can see, leveling up much quicker. Why? Because they raised the level cap to 60, so that's great. Uh, found out that last night uh, the, the first game goes up to 30. The level cap in the first game is 30, so that's they've doubled the level cap, which is really cool. I like that. <clears throat> but that also means that they, in, unless you start from 30 with a previous char character, you're going to have to, you're going to need to level up quickly at the beginning. So they're just basically handing us this. Into a loop that won't let anyone You seem to be able to come and go as you please. I have a particularly strong connection. This guy's voice is so easy to do, just like without modification. It's funny. Take away. I can do it myself. Get us out. Take us with you. Kills your throat, That's though. That's beyond this one's power. power. But a temporary, a temporary <coughs> could See? take you close to the device. <coughs> you can't do it for long, otherwise it kind of like tickles your throat and then you cough. Trust you. Trust is <coughs> okay. That's enough of that. You can take that on trust. But that's how you do that, boys. I can't really explain how to do it. You know I mean? yeah, she doesn't trust him because, oh, she wants to be the only ghost that's haunting me and all that shit. Um, this was really cool, though. I found out that uh, <clears throat> either I could take his little portal or I could just shoot the generator over here. And, uh, okay, that's right, range. There we go. Controls are very simple, to be honest, on the PC. Very, very simple. If you're That's used to keyboard and mouse, you, you get them down almost immediately. Now, uh, as with my first character in the first game, um, the uh, I'm going to stick to melee. I'm not really big into the, the ranged weapons. And uh, one thing I definitely learned is that when you're doing just melee, all you need to do is increase the body attribute just because it, it contributes to not only your melee damage but your hit points and your defense <clears throat> and I figured this out um, this is your this is your uh, melee DPS okay or at least once you change this to a different uh, ability like if you were to do like mm, say an ability like lightning strike that you know couples up with your melee, it would raise this DPS and this DPS, so, um, overall, I mean, I'm pretty, predominantly gonna be melee, so, increasing the body attribute helps me out in all these aspects, so you'll see once I hit these buttons, boom, melee is the same, defense goes up, HP goes up, 
So I pretty much just focus on the body attribute. I don't I don't worry about the willpower because that stuff can be enhanced through uh, through quote unquote gemming your your uh, uh, item pieces or as they as they say adding essence to your items. So if they're if they're essence items to begin with. So I'm not too worried about that stuff. I'd rather be able to dish out as much damage as possible and uh, live through giant groups of mobs. And believe me, playing the first game really showed me how big the group of mobs can get, and it's ridiculous. I'll disable the device and you can go. <clears throat> be ready. Ready for what? A storm is coming, Van Helsing. You may find that your work is far from done. That you know, to be honest, part. the first half hour might just Holy be this God beginning part. Has withdrawn. But I mean, that's Somebody a good thing. At least you don't get. Back. At least you don't have to they sit through the boring, chaotic mess. The boring, uh, monotonous quests Somebody at the beginning. Wants to see you fall. Nothing new about but that. you know, again, those quests. Let me just uh, give you a quick overview of what those quests are. You're fighting a battle fight, with an army, and you're running around giving them orders the and covering them until like you're taking out enemies as they come in waves and stuff and so it's kind of it's it was cool at first and you know once they started adding explosions to the mix then it was even cooler but the quests themselves are very monotonous you know you're just going from one side of the map to the other and back again it's just time ago it didn't grab me like the first game did the first game was kind of all over the place with the questing so um, I, I, I really like that the variety <clears throat> But this beginning part is very cool. You know, it's it's basically the tutorial part, but you're also leveling up pretty quickly. You know, you you get a couple of levels before you even make it out to the uh, the first major area. I can feel it. So we're gonna hit this up again, okay? And uh, no doubt, I have skill points that I haven't spent. Yeah, I got nine skill points. Uh, here's the here's the ability I was talking about. Lightning strike. Wow, it was actually it was actually the name of the ability. <laughs> So you got some of the same abilities in the game, um, nothing too different, maybe some more abilities from the last game. Um, I don't recognize too many of these, to be honest, but you've got more abilities as they as they mentioned in their launch trailer, um, and then you've still got, depending on what class you choose, um, like say the Thaumaturge doesn't have this tab right here. Um, I don't know if the Arcane mechanic has it, but um, you've got your tricks and your auras and stuff like that. but more to those pages which is just crazy to think about but you've got 60 levels to play so plenty of things to do so i'm gonna crank this up okay i'm gonna get that get that and then i'm gonna get this okay that'll be my second this is this is the the setup that i use in uh let's see i'm gonna do no not that that's the setup I used in the first game, so it works really well for me. Receives an additional inventory page. Already? Wow, I waited forever in the first game to get that. Okay. Alright, awesome. Now, as far as I know, reputation is only gained through beating the special monsters, the blue and the, the orange slash yellow monsters, or whatever you want to call them. And, uh, as far as I know, that's how that... <clears throat> that's how that works. Whether you get reputation by killing any monster is beyond me, but if that was the case, I'd be gaining reputation really fast and I'd be getting a lot of perks really quickly. So I'm not 100% sure on that, but I can only assume that killing blue and yellow monsters gives you reputation. It all seems so simple. Defeat the mad scientist and ride into the sunset. But sometimes victory leaves you buried under the ruins. I was lucky. Someone saved me. For a change, I'm not the only mysterious stranger in town. But weeks have passed, and the metropolis of weird science is still waiting for its own savior. Outlaws and escaped monsters roam the streets. The resistance is too weak, so someone else decided to take matters into his own hands. General Harker, the military genius of the city, came back from his exile. He gathered the rest of the disorganized army. His forces are a chaotic mess of weird machines. So far. But they're slowly clearing out the streets. He might not have seen eye to eye with Fulmigati, but he regards me and the Resistance as a threat to the city. 
a coalition of monsters and troublemakers. As a hunter, I won't tolerate others hunting me. I'm ready to fight. I have an underground lair, new soldiers, and my new mysterious ally. I'm quite used to unlikely companions, but Prisoner 7 is the most unusual so far. A former test subject of the mad scientists, master of the ink. He's certainly helpful, but I don't know what to make of him. Now he can prove his worth. Harker's troops are on the move. They want to control the foundries, so he can build more war machines. We will stop them in the sizzling, clanking heart of Borgova. Let the battle begin. Okay, so if you're <clears throat> if you're keeping up with the story, Harker, General Harker, is the new enemy of uh, the state, so to speak. And in the first game, it was uh, Professor Fumagatti, <clears throat> a very mad scientist. And uh, again, I haven't finished the first game, so I don't know how that ends. Obviously, you beat Fumagatti, I guess, but you know how it ends, I don't know. I haven't really uh, gotten to that point yet, but. I really like how the cutscenes are kind of like a combination of two different tabletop strategy games. You got the trading card game, you got the cards laid out all over the place, and then you've got little figurines kind of like Warhammer. You know, if you've never played tabletop Warhammer or something like that, um, you know, we're talking old school like RPG stuff, and I just think it's really cool. Good, good nostalgia feeling. So this is the beginning uh, beginning of the battle, and I'm going to get about maybe eight minutes into it, but you'll see, uh, maybe you'll see how kind of, you know, monotonous the, the quest can be, maybe not, but um, I know I keep saying that, but that's just, it's boring, you know? The beginning is boring. After you get past this part, things get exciting, but it's only after you get past this part. And why should we trust you, you enigmatic, faceless man? She is being very, very uh, hostile towards this guy. He helped us get out, and she's like, Fuck off. It's okay, though. She could be as, you know, bitchy as she wants to be. I don't care. But to be honest, I actually like the hunter class. I like the hunter class in this game. It's just... It's easier to deal with, uh, you know, the th like I said, the Thaumaturge was okay, but it was a little bit boring to me. Um, and usually I like being the caster class, I don't usually like being melee, which wasn't always the case in uh, my history of RPGs. I was always big into being a warrior and, you know, whatever, whatever class wielded a sword and a shield maybe. But um, over the years I've just gone to, to love, uh, I've gotten to love the... <clears throat> Uh, the, the 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 mage class, and uh, that started with World of Warcraft. You know, I, I got into World of Warcraft. I started out as a, a, a warrior and stuff like that, and then I slowly worked my way over to being a mage. Now, in Final Fantasy XI, that was completely different. I was huge into the paladin, so you know, that's a warrior type class. Okay, I got some new items here. I definitely want to put these on. Yet. I can't put that on at all. See, when I was on my Thaumaturge, it took forever to kill these assholes. Forever. I'm not kidding. Like, it was ridiculously... It, it, it took way too long. Okay, so here's a two-handed sword. I'd rather stick with the uh, dual wielding, but this is better in this situation for right now. So I'm just going to, uh, you know, take this into my inventory. And, uh, but as you can see, even though it's slower, it's definitely heavier hitting, and uh, I can destroy these guys with one shot. So happy days. Uh, he was he was kind of just dicking around down there. So I got a lot of places on the map to go to. Um, and you can see why I think these are boring just because it's just like, I mean, I like killing things, don't get me wrong, but I have to go all over the map just to get these, uh, are you going get rid of these guys. Okay, and then, then there's this little thing here. I gotta destroy these. Okay. I don't have any healing potions. Okay, 
Okay, got the same two uh, beginning abilities with, with uh, you know, Van Helsing and Katarina. Katarina's got her split personality ability there, and I've got my healing ability. I hate these guys, they're annoying. Because they slow you down, and it's really just irritating me. Can't wear any of that stuff yet. Okay, so I don't have to go this way. Last time I did, I kind of just wasted time and went all all over the place and uncovered the rest of the map, which is fine, but you, you end up doing that later, so I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm just going to go on over here, grab these last four points, and uh, that'll probably be the end of uh, the episode. Let's grab this. But again, I'll probably just be deleting this guy anyway because I'll be carrying over my character from the first game. Ah, <clears throat> uh, more of these assholes. Let's get rid of them. Go, go, gone. And last but not least, your group. See, if I wanted to use my uh, my secondary ability more frequently, then I'd have to increase my willpower. But uh, I'm not, like I said, I'm not very concerned about it, you know? Not too concerned about it. I'm just a simple ghost of but you might want to use okay, so I'm just gonna, I'm not even gonna bother going all the way to the, uh, the teleport. Um, that's one thing that they improved upon that I really like. I forgot, you have to accept them first before they, before they actually count. Okay, so for her, I think I told her to actually be, uh, okay, so she's melee right now. But I'm gonna go, she's gonna be ranged. She's gonna pick up gold, and that'll be it for now. I don't want her to pick up any items yet until I get past a certain point. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to increase her dexterity because she doesn't really use willpower as far as I know. I mean, she may automatically use her willpower. But I, I don't. I don't do anything with it. All right, so I'm going to use... I'm going to go this way. Okay, and then we're going to go... That crippled general has no chance against And then I've leveled up. I apologize, I'm just gonna, you know, go through these real quick. And I'm actually going to go to this one. And another perk, I like it. Are you going to give me orders? Oh shut up. <clears throat> <clears throat> That seems like, um, hmm. That seems like the only one that I could really use right now. That's decent. Now, being that they've increased the level cap to 60, I can only assume that the reputation level has also increased. Uh, the repu reputation level in the first game was, I believe, maxed out at 10. So, and it took a long time to get to it, and I, I'm still not at it, so I'm just gonna talk to this guy real quick. Impeccable timing, Hunter. As always, I have a message for you. Count Vlado sends his regards, but he had to leave in a hurry to destroy the force walls. <coughs> you are in charge. Last time I checked, vampires couldn't stand daylight. Oh, he Another major reason why I want to be the hunter is because the hunter looks more badass. I, the Thaumaturge kind of looked... Like he looked more steampunkish than the, I haven't seen you know, the hunter, but I just like the way the hunter looks. It's got a anyway, classic Ben Helsing General look to Parker it. Is busy preparing his next attack. Are you ready to employ your tactical genius? But of course. I'm quite tactical. And a genius, too. I'll visit the posts and give orders to the men. At first I thought that they might have changed the, the initial voice actor for Van Helsing, but uh, you listen closely, you know. It is the same guy, just sometimes sounds like it's not. I don't know, it's weird. <clears throat> but, um, that is the first half hour of gameplay for The Incredible Adventures of Van Helsing 2. I really hope you guys enjoyed that little showing. I showed you a little bit of this uh, beginning part here and uh, 
<clears throat> it's not bad. I just it you know it's a it's kind of a it's a worse start than the first game. Let's put it that way. But later on it gets it picks up and it gets better. So you know, don't worry. Once you get past this bar, it's kind of like Fallout 3. Once you get past the beginning, it's a lot of fun. Um, so basically, the pros of this game is that it's it's exactly as Neo Core Games said it would be. It's an absolute sequel. It's a direct sequel to the first game. It continues the story. It's uh, you know. It doesn't change too much on the game. The graphics are the same, so you know if you can play the first one, you can play the second one, which is a plus, okay? You want that, because <clears throat> if they had increased the graphics or changed anything with the graphics, then it's a possibility that, uh, you know, uh, if your computer is not up to snuff, it may not have worked. Now, I know mine probably would have, but that I'm not gloating or nothing, but it's just... That's the that's what I like when when companies do that. You know, uh, Runa Games did that with Torchlight One and Two. They increased a few things here and there with Torchlight Two, but basically ran it on the same engine so that people who enjoyed the first game were able to enjoy the second game just as much. Um, so I like that. I like the the fact that they kept a lot of the user interface the same, so that way it's familiar to the player. It's it's a familiar environment, so you're not wondering, well, what the hell did they change? What did they do? You can see the changes. It's very subtle. Um, like I said, I pointed out at the beginning, you've got six slots instead of four now, so you got more chances to have more um, more abilities down on the hot bar there, and uh, you know this instead of being all the way over here is now integrated with. The, the rest of where the where the UI is, which makes sense to me. I don't know why they had it over here in the first game, but again, it's just a simple click of the R key to change between your weapons. But if you wanted to use your mouse, you don't have to go all the way over here now. You can just quickly come down here and boom, boom, okay? Which is great, love it. Um, the addition of new abilities, great. The addition of the, the level cap up to 60, great, I love it. Um, the new environments, very cool, very uh, steampunkish, which is uh, the the thing that they were going for with this game, a very uh, steampunk style, old school Van Helsing look. So, um, you know, and you got the main three classes again from the very first game, so you don't have to worry about whether your character is going to carry over because it will, no matter what class you were. Um, you can. I don't know if uh, if you don't finish the first game, I don't know if you can carry it over without finishing it or without getting it to level 30, or if it'll just automatically get your character to 30, but, um, you know, I, I, I haven't tested that yet, I, and I don't really feel like testing it because I do want to get my character to 30. So, uh, you know, feel free to test that out for yourselves. <clears throat> the uh, I, I will mention one other thing that I like about this game is is the simple fact that um, uh, when you go into the store in the first game the store like say you went to a shopkeeper you went to buy stuff or sell stuff the shopkeeper's inventory would appear above Katarina's inventory and then hers was down below and then yours was on the right side and then there's this big chunk of uh, you know space or open you know screen in the middle which is fine but. I got really confused for a second because I played this a little bit and then I went back to the first game and I was like, what the hell happened to the inventory? Like, why is it not popping up? Is this game glitched? No, it's not. It's just in a different spot. I like how they set it up in this game where um, they changed that from, you know, the shop is over Katarina's inventory to you got Katarina's over here, you got the shop in the middle, and then you've got Van Helsing's on the right. So you can see everybody's stuff. Um, I also like the improved uh, user interface for Katarina. You can go to her equipment. You got a nice little uh, artsy background here, and then it gives you, of course, the items in which she can wield, and that's about it. And then you got her inventory down here. You got tabs for everything else, like runes and alchemy components and stuff like that. <clears throat> and then you've got all her other stuff here. You know, Ben Helsing, not too much different here as well. Pretty much uh, similar to the to the first game, um, but again, user interface. Uh, uh, improvements, I love them. I, I think it's. I think that uh, what they've done to this game is really. It feels like a true sequel. So, if that's what you're looking for in a video game series, I highly recommend The Incredible Adventures of Van Helsing. Uh, it's just a great game if you like dungeon crawlers, action RPGs, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it has a set character, but it has a great story to it, and I think that uh, anybody who's willing to spend $15 on, a, on an amazing game like this, um, definitely going to get your money's worth. I don't really have too many bad things to say about this. I, I you know, like I said at the beginning, I thought that uh, the first game having controller support was a bad, you know, was 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 great. 
you know, and then the second game all of a sudden doesn't have controller support. But then I thought back to it, and uh, let's be honest, the game was actually, it was set up more towards the mouse and keyboard. It was actually set up really well for the mouse and keyboard, and not so well for the controller, because when you play with a controller in the first game, a lot of your abilities are listed over here, which covers up the quest list and stuff like that, and that just makes it all cluttered and crappy looking, and it wasn't great. So, um, and then when you go into the inventory, it has a radial system instead of what you see here. Uh, it's just a stupid radial dial that it's, it's kind of clunky to, to work with. So, if that was a particular reason for them taking it out of the game, good. It's actually not a great thing to play a controller with, um, but it, it does actually do pretty well for itself, uh, even if you do want to play with a controller, like say you want to lay down in bed and, and play a game, play the game, um, you can play with a controller and it still works just fine, but it's just the user interface is very clunky. But again, I really don't have anything majorly bad to say about the game. I try to find, you know, cons, you know, pros and cons about each game that I play. Um, the only con I have is the beginning here is just boring. That's it. Like, it, once you get through this major battle stuff, you know, which it does take quite a bit of time, but once you get through the major battle portion, the rest of the game is actually really good. So, I, you know, that's the only bad thing I really have to say about the game. You know, <clears throat> I don't have anything else bad to say about it. That's the one thing. Um, but the voice acting still great. Uh, I think that they kind of skimped on some of the voice acting for the extra characters, but that makes sense. You know, you don't want to emphasize the, the stand-ins. You want to you want to emphasize the main characters that are pertinent to the story rather than the guys who just, you know, have one line to say every once in a while. So that's understandable. But that's my review of this game. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you guys are enticed to maybe check this game out. I'm not sure if there's a demo on Steam or not, but it's $14.99, so I don't know why you wouldn't buy it in the first place if you like these types of games. Um, $14.99 is not a lot of money to be spending on video games nowadays. In fact, that's like my new benchmark price point. Like, that's, that's the price I'm willing to pay for a video game nowadays. $60, it has to be a really good game for $60. So, um, you know... Let me know what you guys think down in the comments section. Uh, does this game look in, uh, enticing to you? And if it does, you know, just let me know. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think it looks. You know how how you how you or what you think about the uh, about the graphics, about the gameplay, um, <clears throat> just about the the game in general. And let me know if you actually end up if I've enticed you to purchase it yourself. But that's gonna do it for me today, guys. I'd like to thank you all for joining me. And please join me again next time, whenever that may be. For another episode of Halftime where I take the first half hour of a game and I criticize it to no end. And if you like this episode or any of the other episodes on my channel, don't forget to subscribe. But until then guys, I'm Adam Wolf. This is The Incredible Adventures of Van Helsing 2. And I will see you all in the next episode.